Well, good day folks. Here I am again. This is my uh, second live video that, that I'm doing. Um, the first one I did I was so nervous and, and I felt like I messed it up and I felt like I fumbled my way through it and it was quite an experience and, and I said to myself I'll never do that again. Um, but alas, here I am doing another live one. Um, but the main reason for that is because I have a word uh, from the Lord that I'd like to share with you. Um, definitely this is this is not something normal for me going live but praise the Lord that we have the privilege of sharing his word and so I, today I'd just like to share this word with you I uh, pray that you would uh, um, stay with me and, and listen right through to the end whether you watch it live or whether you watch it later but that you would listen um, right from the beginning all the way through to the end amen so if you just turn with me uh, to the gospel of Mark in the book of Mark and uh, Mark chapter 6 and this whole account of what I want to share here from Mark chapter 6 is, is when Jesus had been preaching and doing miracles and um, it says here from verse 15 others people were saying that Jesus is Elijah or others said that he is a prophet um, or, or as one of the prophets but Herod King Herod at the time he heard of Jesus and he heard what people were saying and he said, it is John, referring to John the Baptist, um, whom I have beheaded, and he has risen from the dead. So Herod believed this was John the Baptist, whom he had, had beheaded, and he believed he had risen from the dead. And it goes on to say here from verse 17, For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John, and bound him in prison, for this purpose, because of Herodias' sake his brother Philip's wife. So Herodias was his brother Philip's wife. However, what had happened, he had married her himself. He had taken his brother's wife and made her his own wife. And John the Baptist had said unto Herod that it was not lawful, in other words, it's not right for thee um, to have your brother's wife. And for this reason, Herodias had a quarrel against John the Baptist and would have killed him, but she could not. And this is the whole reason of why Herod had taken him and put him into prison. But then something quite interesting that I read here in Mark 6, in, in verse 20, it says, For Herod feared John. Why? Because he knew or knowing that he was a just man and holy. So he feared him because he knew that he was a just man, a holy man. That's quite interesting, John the Bat uh, sorry, that King Herod would, would see that and know that. But it gets even more interesting. He says this, um, and he observed him, so he watched him. And when he heard him, he did many things, and he heard him gladly. That struck me, you know, Herod watched, he observed John the Baptist, and he heard him, and he heard him gladly. He heard the things that he had to say. You know, it just struck me how many people are out there in the world today that are not serving the Lord themselves, because Herod definitely wasn't a man of God. Um, but he heard what John the Baptist had to say and he observed him and he knew that he was a just and a holy man. And so he heard him gladly, he heard what he had to say. And it just struck me, how many people are like that today? People that don't serve the Lord themselves, but they will say to, to uh, preachers or people who are sharing the gospel on the streets and reaching out and, and pastors and people doing the work of the Lord, they'll say, wow, you know, you're doing good stuff. And they'll listen to what they say and they'll say, oh, that's wonderful. And maybe even give money to the church or money to street preachers to help out uh, with the work that they're doing and all those things. And they say, oh, this is wonderful. Um, but that doesn't really mean much, does it? Let's read on and see what happens in this account here. Because he heard him gladly. But then a time came when it was Herod's birthday in verse 21. And Herod on his birthday made supper for his lords, high captains and chief estates of Galilee. And when the daughter of Herodias came in uh, and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him, the king said unto the girl, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it to thee. Mm -hmm. And he sware unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee, even unto the half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said to her mother, which is Herodias, what shall I ask? And she said, Ask for the head of John the Baptist. And she came in straight away 
with haste unto King Herod, and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger or on a platter the head of John the Baptist. And verse 26, the king was exceeding sorry. Why was he exceeding sorry? Because he knew that John the Baptist was a just and a holy man. And he heard the things he had to say, observed him, and he heard him gladly. And so here yeah, he's exceeding sorry. Yet, yet for his oath's sake, and for their sakes which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner. Um, the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison. And he brought, uh, he brought his head in a charger or on a platter and gave it to the damsel, to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother, Herodias. And that's quite an incredible thing. You know, guys, it's easy for us to say the right things and to agree with the right things. But that doesn't make us right before the Lord. Um, you know, here he's exceeding sorry because he hears John the Baptist. He hears him gladly. You know, observes him. He knows he's a just and a holy man. But when push comes to shove, he chooses the way of the world. He chooses because he's afraid of what he said now and displeasing all the people around him. You know, it's so important for us to make sure we rather displease the world than displease the Lord. Um, you know, when he hears John the Baptist, what would John the Baptist have been speaking about? Well, he would have been speaking about the things of the Lord. You know, and, and it blew me away when I read that because I thought, wow, Herod would have listened to John the Baptist and listened gladly. And what he heard was the things of God because John the Baptist would have spoken about things of God. He would have spoken about Jesus. And he heard him. But yet when he gets put in a situation, he chooses the world around him. Instead of choosing the things of the Lord. And you know, once upon a time, I, I was in a similar place myself. I, I remember before the Lord had saved me, where I would talk to people who had now given their life to the Lord, old friends and that, and they had given their life to the Lord, and they would tell me the story. And, and I would say to them, wow, I'm, I'm happy for you. And I, and I wasn't being sarcastic about it. Um, and I, I would say to them, I wish I could do that. And they would say to me, no, well, you can and I said, no, 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 you don't understand, I can't do that. You see, because I was in a sense in the same place as Herod, where I knew that was the right way. I knew that the way of the Lord is, is the way to choose. That's what I need to do. That's what I need to follow. Um, but yet I was enjoying the things of this world, the pleasures of this life, more than the pleasures of the Lord. Uh, I enjoyed the darkness more than the lights. In fact, in, in the Gospel of John chapter 3, in verse 19, it says, This is the condemnation, that light, Jesus, has come. But mankind, man loves the darkness rather than the light. And I was in exactly the same place, and I'm sure that's where Herod was as well. In fact, I want to say to you today that it doesn't matter if you support a church financially. It doesn't matter if you're supporting some outreach ministry financially. It doesn't matter if you agree with what those people say. It doesn't matter if you religiously go to church on a regular basis. Uh, it doesn't matter if you say that those things are good. What matters is how are you living your life? What, what do you put first in your life? You see, in this sense here, um, King Herod was willing to cut off the things of the Lord to keep the pleasures of this life, to please mankind in this life. And what are you cutting off in your life? Are you cutting off the things of the Lord or are you cutting off the things of this world? What is it that you're cutting off? Yeah, John the Baptist's head was cut off. Are we cutting off the head of the Lord and the things of the Lord in our life so that we can live life our own way? If you turn with me to another account in um, the book of Samuel, uh, book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, sorry, in chapter 15, and what's happened here basically is, is through the prophet Samuel, the Lord has said to, to Saul, who was the king of Israel at that time, that he must go and utterly destroy the Amalekites and leave nothing and no one alive. Destroy everything, young and old, all the animals, nothing must be left. And so King Saul gets his army together and off they go and they, they overpower, they destroy Amalek. But they keep the best of the animals alive, the best of the livestock, and they keep the king of Amalek alive, King Agag. Um, and so that night after that's happened, 
uh, the word of the Lord comes to Samuel and tells Samuel what's happened. And Samuel that night cannot sleep. And the next day he goes to see King Saul. And when King Saul sees him, he says to Samuel, he says, Blessed be the Lord. We, we've done what the Lord has said. And Samuel says, Oh, really? If you've done what the Lord has said, why do I hear sheep bleating in my ears? What is this? And, and Saul says, No, well, we've kept the, the best of the, the animals alive so we can sacrifice them to the Lord. You know, it sounds like a noble thing. It sounds like it's the right thing. We can say the right things, guys, but it doesn't mean we're right with the Lord. That's not what God had asked him. The Lord had said to him, I want you to go and utterly destroy and leave nothing and no one alive. And so he disobeyed the word of the Lord. That's sin. When we disobey the Lord, it's sin. It's evil in the Lord's eyes. And um, Samuel says to him, that's not what the Lord asked you. He says, no, we've done what the Lord asked us. And Samuel says, you know, your disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft before the Lord. And the Lord says, as you've rejected his word, he's rejected you from being king. And Samuel turns to go away from him, and, and King Saul tries to grab hold of his clothing and tears and his robe. And Samuel turns around and says to him, as you have torn my robe yet today, so has God torn the kingdom from you. And all of a sudden now, King Saul is very sorrowful. He says, oh, I've sinned against the Lord. And... And I've disobeyed him. I've, I've feared the people more than I feared God. It's exactly what we read with King Herod. He feared his promise and the people around him more than he feared God. See guys, we can hear the word of the Lord. We can hear these truths. But what do we do with it? It's not about what we say and what we hear. It's what we do with what we hear. Folk, what are you doing? What are you cutting off in your life? And so he has the kingdom, the kingdom torn from him. Um, you know the account, if you read further on... It, it was Daniel that the Lord had planned to be, oh, sorry, not Daniel, it was David that the Lord had planned to become king after Saul. He said it was a man after his own heart. But in any case, what happens here now is, is Saul pleads with, with Samuel. And so Samuel stays with him and they worship the Lord together. Um, we'll read that here from uh, 1 Samuel 15, verse 15. So Samuel turned again after Saul and Saul worshipped the Lord. And then in verse 32 it says this, then said Samuel, bring you here to meet Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came unto him delicately. And Agag said within himself, surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said to king Agag, as your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed cuts Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Now that sounds brutal. That sounds like crazy stuff. But you know, the principle that the Lord is trying to get through to us, folk, is that the things of this world need to be cut up into pieces in our lives. Because if we keep them there, if we keep them idle there in our lives, they have a way of seeping back in. And we'll, before long, you'll find yourself living after those things and following after those things and enjoying those things more than your relationship with the Lord. And the Lord what, doesn't want that. And I want to ask you, here we had an account where King Herod chose to cut up, cut off the head of John the Baptist, cut off the things of the Lord so that he could please man. You know, Saul wanted to please man instead of obeying the Lord. But Samuel comes along and he cuts off King Agia. He cuts off the things of this world. What are you cutting off in your life, folk? How are you living? The way you live your life shows what you cut off. It's not what you say, folk. It's the way that you live your life that shows what you're cutting off. I once upon a time said all the right things. If you had asked me, I would have said, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe He came and He died on the cross for my sins. I believe He rose again. Um, I would have said all those right things to you. But the way I was living my life, showed that although I said the right things, I was cutting those things off from my life because I wanted to enjoy the pleasures of this life, the pleasures of this world. I love the things of darkness more than the things of light. And I want to ask you today, what is it that you're cutting off in your life? What do you love more in your life? Do you love the things of this world or do you love the things of the Lord in your life more? Folk, it's a very important question and it's a very important answer that you need to ask yourself. Uh, an answer that you need to give yourself, sorry. Because depending on what that answer is, it, it will show where you're going to spend your eternity, either in hell or in heaven. We need to know, folk, we need to cut off the right things. 
You know, here, as we say, this is quite gruesome. But that's how gruesome the Lord wants us to be with the sin and the darkness of this world. If you don't believe me, just look at the cross of Calvary, folk. You know, we have pictures these days in our churches and people in their houses of a cross and a nice sun setting up on a hill. Guys, I tell you, the cross of Calvary wasn't like that. It was gruesome, folk. I'm pretty sure that if most of us today had been there, we wouldn't have been able to stomach it, to see the way that Jesus was torn. His flesh was torn up, his bones were sticking out, he was beaten, how he was bleeding. I wonder what the stench must have been like, um, to see how they would spit upon him and beat him, how they would pierce him and give him vinegar to drink. We, we wouldn't have been able to stomach it. It was gruesome. But that's how we need to be with our sin. It's a gruesome thing, folks. Cut it off. Cut it off in your life and turn to Jesus. Don't cut off the head of John the Baptist. In other words, don't cut off the things of God, folk. Rather cut King Agag into pieces. Cut the things of darkness into pieces. Guys, it's so important. These things will count for eternity. And if you turn with me now um, to, to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 13, and um, I'm just going to read from, from verse 11. You know, we're living in a time now, you look at the coronavirus and, and, and all the, the things that are going on around the world. Like, uh, this message is not about convincing you about the last days. But, but if you look at the world, like, you can see for yourself. You can see that things are in chaos compared to how they were 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, the world is, is not the same anymore. There's not the same peace. There's not the same harmony. Uh, um, things are in a total mess and it shows that we're getting closer and closer to the return of the Lord and, and these things that are taking place they're becoming worse they're happening more often just like a woman goes into labor she has her contractions and they come closer and closer together they become stronger it's exactly what we see going on in the world today and so it shows us that, that we are so close to the return of Jesus Christ and so we read here in, in Romans 13 and from verse 11 it says and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed basically meaning that the return of the lord jesus is closer than than it was before and it's always going to be it's closer today than it was yesterday and tomorrow if the lord doesn't come it'll be closer than it is today and so we need to make sure guys we're getting closer and closer every day he says in verse 12 the night is far spent. The day is at hand. We are so close. We are, this night is, is right at the end. We, we're so close to Jesus coming. And so he says, because of this, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let's cut into pieces, King Agag. Cut off the things of this world, the sins which so easily beset us, the weight and the sins, folk, that lead us away from the Lord. Cast off those things. Cut them in pieces. And he says, and let us put on the armor of light. In other words, let's take the things of the Lord and hold them close to us. Let's keep his commandments. Let's follow the Lord Jesus. Let's obey him. Let's do what he says. Even if it doesn't make sense. You know, he says it's better to trust the Lord with all your heart than to lean on your own understanding. Um, but let's put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not cut off the things of the Lord. Let's keep them dear to us so that the Lord can walk with us and help us. And when I say help us, uh, um, I mean help us to cast off these things. Because I'm getting to a point with that. He says in verse 13, let us walk, in other words, live our lives honestly, as in the daytime and not in the nighttime, in the light, not in the things of darkness, not in rioting, not in drunkenness, not in chambering, in other words, in, in um, an illicit sexual lifestyle, not in wantonness, not in unbridled lusts, not in strife and envy, but this is what you need to do. Put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put him on. Don't cut him off in your life. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ so that you don't have space for the things of this world so they can be cut off in your life, folks. Right? When I say, what are you cutting off? It's to, to prick your heart, to make you think about your lifestyle. Folk, are you living for Jesus? Are you living for yourself? Are you living for this world? Guys, it's a very important thing. 
I thought I was fine once upon a time when I was living for myself and living for the pleasures of this life and this world. But if I died in that place, even though I said all the right things and, and claimed to believe all the right things, if I died during that time, I have no doubt at all that I would have been in hell for eternity. But praise God for His mercy and His love. The Lord says that it's the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. The goodness of God, He shared His word with me. People prayed for me. And, and the Lord's word, the Lord stirred my heart. And He touched me and made me realize that I need to cut off those things. And I need to come to Jesus. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That His goodness helped me to repent. Repent is turning away from those things. Cutting them off. And turning to Jesus. And putting on Jesus Christ. This is what you and I need to do, folk. The problem with this is that you and I don't have that ability to do that within ourselves. You know, when you read earlier on in Romans, Paul says, the things that I want to do, those things I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, those things I do. He says, how, how the desire to do the right things, to put on Jesus, is there. But how to perform that, I, I find it not. I don't know how to do it. So is there any hope for you and I? Well, folk, this is the good news. Jesus came and gave his life for you and I. See, he was cut up on the cross of Calvary for you and I. But that doesn't mean just because Jesus has paid the price now, all is hunky-dory and I'm fine. There's still something I need to do, folk. You see, Herod had a choice to make. Either he had to reject that young girl in Herodias' request and stand for the things of the Lord, even though mankind would have turned against him and all those people there would have turned against him. Uh, King Saul had a choice to make. The prophet Samuel had a choice to make. He cut up. King Agag, what choice will you make, folk? If you turn with me to, to um, the book of Zechariah in the Old Testament, and in chapter 3, and um, I'm just going to read from verse 3. It says, now Joshua, now just to put you in the picture, if you read the verses before that, Joshua at that time in Israel was the high priest. So he's a religious man. You see, sometimes for us to claim to be religious is not enough, folk. You'll see now as well. Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. He was clothed with filthy garments. What could that be, folk? Could it perhaps be because the things of this world were more important to him? The high priest, really? The things of this world, the things of darkness is what he, he, he longed for? You know, folk, without Jesus Christ, our, our, our garments are filthy. We are filthy before the Lord. We are open and naked before Him. He sees everything. There's nothing we can hide from Him. There's no excuse we can make before Him. We can make our excuses here one to another, mankind with each other on earth, and give our opinions here. But one day when we stand before the Lord, there's nothing we can answer against the Lord. There will be no excuse that will count. Because we will be open before the Lord, naked and filthy. You know, we try and cover up our, our things with our good deeds we do. You know, whether it be helping the old granny across the street or, or giving money to an orphanage or to a ministry or whatever it may be. We, we do our good deeds and we think it cuts off our, our bad deeds. As long as we can have more good things that cover our bad things. Folk, it doesn't work like that. In fact, the Lord tells us in the book of Isaiah that our own righteousness, our own good deeds are like filthy rags before Him. Just like He's got filthy garments before mm -hmm. the Lord. In verse 4 it says, and he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. You see, folk, this is the decision that you need to make. If you want to cut off the things of this world, cut King Agag into pieces in your life, and put on Jesus Christ, then just come before the Lord Jesus. Because, in fact, to do that completely, you cannot do it. If you could do it, there would be no need for Jesus to have come down to give his life upon the cross. But because you and I could not do it, God the Father had to send forth His Son to lay down His life for you and I upon the cross of Calvary and then praise His name, raise again three days later so that we can then rise in newness of life. You see, folk, we need Jesus. So if that's your heart. If you want to cut off the things in this world, cut off the darkness, cut off King Aya in your life, then come to the Lord Jesus. Come with your filthy rags. Don't think that you have to first sort things out, folk. I used to think that. I used to think that if I'm going to come to the Lord Jesus, I need to first stop this and stop that and get rid of this and get rid of that and change things in my life and then start doing this and start doing that, start going here and start going there. Folks, it doesn't work like that. Just come to Jesus. Just come stand before Him. Cry to Him 
He's paid the price upon the cross of Calvary. He was broken and bruised for you, folk. Come before the Lord Jesus. Call out unto him. And he will help you cut off the things in your life. I came to Jesus, folk, and maybe for about two or three months, I, I was still living in the things of this world. But at the same time, I was still uh, living for the things of the Lord. For the first time, I was reading my Bible and praying, going to church. But I couldn't stay in that place. I had to make a choice. But the Lord Jesus worked with me, folk. The Lord worked with me so much so that eventually he brought me to a point where he spoke to me. And he showed me the picture of Samson and Delilah. And he showed me how Delilah is the things of this world. It may seem beautiful, but folk, the end result is it blinds you and it lands you up in prison in bondage. And that's not the, heart's Lord, the Lord's heart for you. The Lord wants to make you free, folk. Jesus wants to make you free. If you know Jesus, you'll be free and free indeed. And that's what he wants to give you. And folk, he, he showed me that and he said to me, now choose this day who, whom you will serve. And because I'd come to Jesus and I'd allowed him to work in my life, when he, he brought me to that point, it wasn't even a choice. And I said to him, I said, Lord, it's not even a decision. I don't want the things of this world. I want you. But the only reason I could cut those things off and come to that place is because I came to Jesus. Yeah, Joshua stands before me. I came with my filthy garments and my filthy rags. I stood before the Lord Jesus and I cried out to him and he came and he worked with me. And he helped me to cut those things, <coughs> excuse me, cut those things off in my life. Won't you do the same? Folk, if you want to cut those things off, come to the Lord Jesus. If you want to cut off the things of the Lord Jesus, then just ignore me. But remember this, one day you will have to stand before the Lord and give an account for your life. And you will not have an excuse. Let's read on here. Uh, verse 4, And he answers and he spoke unto them, that those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from you. See, Jesus will take those away from you. How can he do that? Because he paid the price on your behalf. And then he says this, um, and, and unto him he said, Behold, I've caused your iniquity to pass from you. Isn't that glorious, folk? All the sin of this life, all the things of darkness. In fact, when you read in the book of Psalms, it says this, that he takes our, our transgressions and our iniquities and he casts them away as far from us as the east is from the west. And you know what I love about that? And, and maybe I'm wrong in this, but, but the way the Lord ministered that into my heart is that, you know, when you talk about north and south, we have a distinct place that says, well, now I'm as far north as I can go, and it's the North Pole. And we have a distinct place that says, I'm as far south as I can go, and that's the South Pole. You know, but with East and West, there's no distinct, say, this is the furthest I can go. As you go around the world, you just keep going East, or you just keep going West. There's no distinct place, say, this is the furthest. It's just the way the Lord ministered in tomorrow. That's how far. He's taken our sins and our iniquities and transgressions and cast them away from us. He's caused them, how does he say, um, to pass from thee, to pass from us. You know the glorious thing, folk, when we are in Jesus, God says this to us in his word. That our sins and our iniquities, he chooses to remember no more. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that, folk. And you know the glorious thing is, we often say that God forgets our, our, our transgressions against him. No, he doesn't, folk. See, God is pure and holy and perfect. He cannot forget, but He does this. He chooses to remember them no more. Why? Because of the once and for all perfect work, the perfect sacrifice that Jesus gave or did for you and I on the cross of Calvary. That's why He chooses to remember them no more, folk. And then look at this, and He says, And I will clothe thee with change of raiment, with change of clothing. I will clothe thee. You know, when we come to the Lord Jesus, uh, the Bible tells us this, that in Christ we receive robes of righteousness. Not filthy garments, not filthy rags, but robes of righteousness, folk. That's Jesus Christ covering us. When our Father from heaven looks upon us and He sees us, He sees the righteousness of Christ within us and He is well pleased. Folk, won't you come to that place? Won't you come to Jesus Christ today? And, and surrender yourself to him. Come and be a follower of Jesus. Come and be born again. Come and cry to the Lord Jesus. I, I know maybe for many of you, you might ask the question, what does it mean to be born again? What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Folk, the best thing for you to do is just to come, call on the Lord Jesus. Tell him, Lord Jesus, I want to cut off King Agag in my life. I, I don't want the things of this world and the pleasure of this life that I chase after and that I live for to be the things in my life. I want to put on you. I want to put on Jesus. I don't want to cut your head off in my life. I want to put you on. And then he will begin to work with you, folk. 
And I tell you what, it'll be glorious when he works with you, folk. I know that for a fact. I, I did that in 2006, folk. That's, what, 14 years ago. And by his grace and by his mercy, he's worked with me. And yeah, I sit today still serving him, folk. And it's not because I'm a strong Christian. And not because I was a strong-willed person and I could cut those things off. No, folk. It was because of Jesus Christ. Because of the rock of my salvation. The firm foundation that he became in my life. And he can do the same for you and will do the same for you. If you will only come and call out to the Lord Jesus. Folk, he'll change, he'll do a work in your life that it's so unbelievable you won't believe it. As a personal testimony, when, when, when I had come to the Lord and done that, and the Lord had done that work in my life, that he helped me to cut those things off my life and put him on, uh, it was a short while after that that I went into a shopping center the one day, and there I saw an old friend of mine and, he, and his wife that I hadn't seen um, since I had been born again, since Jesus had saved me. And um, they walked straight past me. They looked at me and walked straight past me. <laughs> and then I went and I tapped my friend on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And he turned around and, and almost at the same time his wife turned around and they looked at me. And they first looked at me confused. And then eventually they said to me, Baron, is that you? And I said, yes, it's me. How are you guys doing? And they were so flabbergasted by how much I changed. They said, what have you done? You look so different. Guys, I'd done nothing. I didn't have a different hairstyle. I didn't grow a beard or cut a beard. I looked exactly the same. The difference was, Jesus had come. And he had taken away the filthy garments, the filthy rags from my life. And he had clothed me with his robes of right. He helped me to cut off King Agag and to keep him alive. He helped me to put him on in my life. And folks, that's what the Lord wants to do for you. I know that. I know He wants to do that for you. He loves you. And I know He loves you because He sent Jesus for you, folk. And so once you come today, I'll ask you this question again. What are you cutting off? If you've been cutting off the things of the Lord, then today I ask you, have your heart's desire changed by the Word of God that I've shared with you? Let the Holy Ghost take this Word and prick your hearts so that you'll come and you'll say, what is it that I need to do to be saved? And I'll say to you, repent and believe in Jesus Christ, folk. And as you come and believe in Jesus, allow him to work with you so that he can help you cut those things off and help you to put him on. And as he molds you like that, folk, you will see a change in your life that's sweeter than you've ever experienced before. You now, I used to think before that if I come to Jesus, life is going to be boring. Because I used to think the things of this life were fun. And folk, I can tell you now with Jesus, the things I experience now, I mean, life is so much better. I don't want to go back to those things. In fact, the Bible says that if we do go back to those things, it's like a dog going back to its vomit. If I come and experience the joy of the salvation of God through Jesus Christ. If you have been touched by the word of the Lord today, and you want to you wanna surrender your life, you want to be a follower of Jesus, you want to be born again, you wanna, and you've, you're going to cry to Him and have cried out to Him, then I, I ask you, please leave a comment here. Or if you don't want to leave a comment there, send me a, a message, an inbox message, um, so that I can, get, I can um, get back to you and I can chat to you and help guide you by the grace of the Lord in this decision and that I can pray for you. Thank you so much for, for letting me share this word and for taking time to listen to the word of God. Folk. Make sure you don't cut off the things of God in your life. Cut off the things of this world and put on Jesus Christ. Folk. He loves you and he gave his life for you. Come to Him and let Him show you His goodness and His love. Praise the Lord. Amen.